What's going on guys, Teen Mechanic here. Uh, I figured today might be a good day to bring you guys a video. Uh, I haven't uploaded in uh, too long actually, but uh, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to work certain things out. I mean, I've had certain opportunities that I'm hoping to take advantage of here in the near future. Anyway guys, in this video, we're going to be going over exactly what's wrong with this gem that I purchased in the last video. I didn't purchase it in the last video, but I showed it to you and uh, it really is a gem. It has only 43,000 original kilometers, which is 27,000 miles. It's insane. It's only been owned by one family. Well, it's only been in one family since 1982. I actually said in the last video that there was a story with this thing, uh, with the mileage being so low, and I never told it, so maybe now's a good time. So basically what happened was, um, this guy uh, that I bought it from, his uncle used to drive him to school in this car every morning um, since he bought it. Uh, he was driving around apparently in a Ford Taurus, uh, and then the dealer talked him up to something uh, nicer and bigger and whatnot. Uh, so he bought it new apparently. And then he uh, later on, after driving it for a little bit, got diagnosed with something. Now, the guy who uh, was telling the story, he didn't remember exactly what it was, um, but he, his uncle got diagnosed with something terminal and significant, and um, apparently he thought that walking everywhere would add years onto his life, so he pretty much just parked a car and would walk everywhere that he needed to go. It actually turns out that it did add quite a bit of time onto his life. I, I don't remember exactly how old he said that he lived to. He, I think he said that it added almost 30 years onto his life, which to me... That's pretty crazy. That's a pretty great win. But either way, now that it's been parked for all that time, the mileage is very, very low. Unfortunately, when his uncle did pass away, apparently he inherited the car or something like that, and uh, then he drove it for a bit, and then now he has to sell it. But now I get to own it, and I get to admire just how pristine this car is. But anyway, that's enough talking. I hope you guys enjoyed that story. Um, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. I thought it was pretty inspiring. But anyway... In this video, like I said, we're going to be going over everything that is wrong with this car. It's not perfect. Despite the mileage, it's absolutely not perfect. It has a couple issues with it. Um, the most significant one being a fuel leak. It is leaking fuel very significantly. Um, the guy said that w when I bought it, he said it was leaking fuel from the bowl of the carburetor and from the in inlet. Um, and that's what he told me, you know, he said that was leaking, and it is, it is leaking that. Not out of the bowl, I haven't noticed out of the bowl, but it's leaking out of the accelerator pump, not the inlet. But it is leaking somewhere else that's pretty significant, which is actually why I have this. It's leaking out of the fuel pump, and I thought, okay, loose hose, may, maybe just try and maybe even put some PTFE tape around there and see if I can get it to just tighten up or, you know, and stop leaking. Turns out it's leaking from the, the inner seal of the fuel pump. The fuel pump isn't bad, it still works, but it's leaking so much gas out of the rings and out of the seals that is actually part of the pump itself. So there's no fixing or saving that pump, so I went on Rock Auto and I bought a brand new mechanical fuel pump for this thing. So as you can hopefully see here, this here's a Delphi pump. Uh, it seems like it was pretty good. It was real expensive. It set me back a whole $41. But as you can see here, this is the pump comes with its new gaskets and everything. I made sure to get the three, not three inlet, but uh, three different hoses. Uh, you tight, there's one that goes on here and two that go on here. Uh, one is, I think one is, what, uh, is a return line is what it is. Rather than just an inlet and an outlet, there's also a return line. That's what I think. I'm not sure what this is called. For some reason, I want to call it a tongue. But uh, it is very long. This rides on the camshaft. That's how a mechanical one works. There's an electric one that sits in the fuel tank itself uh, or even on, sometimes on the side of the block. Uh, although mechanical ones of this era, you know, that's, that was the more common one. But anyway, this goes way deep inside the block and rides on the camshaft and the cam lobe will pump this. It's actually kind of like how a well works. But anyway, guys, I think I've done enough talking for now. Um, if you want to see how a mechanical fuel pump works, there's lots of videos online. But anyway, Anyway, I went ahead and I took off most of the intake. It's sitting right down there. And now we have pretty good access to the top of the fuel pump. It's really hard to get a camera in there, but basically the fuel pump is just above that oil filter, kind of beside it. You see where underneath the car there, right kind of there where that bucket is catching the dripping fuel? That right there is uh, where the fuel pump is. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove it. It should be extremely easy. If we look at the new one, there's a bolt on either side, and that should pretty much take it right out. Uh, and then there are three lines. I'm going to have to have a catch can ready because I know 
I'm uh, gonna have quite a bit of fuel coming out of there, I think. Well, actually, maybe not. We'll see. This thing hasn't been running in a while. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and get started on this. I uh, don't really have a tripod to get under the car, so we'll see how it all works out. All right, guys, so sorry I did it off camera, but I went ahead and got the fuel pump out. Uh, and as you can see, that's quite the difference there. So that one's a Delphi, and that one's an original Ford one, and it actually turns out that it was leaking oil out of uh, out of it as well, and the gasket was broken, and part of it's actually stuck to the block, so i got to get that off. But everything looks pretty much exactly the same. Well, actually, no, everything looks the same, really. Uh, I mean, different design, but uh, same shape, same inlets and outlets and everything like that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and install the car. I'm very sorry that I did it off camera. Uh, I actually, in the car over there, there's actually, I went in um, kind of like, I went up and over the frame rail to get to the uh, the close the bolt that's closest to the passenger compartment. I went over the frame rail to get to it rather than you know under it sticking up and using U joints. I went over the frame rail and just used a long extension. Much easier that way. Uh, once you have the metal fuel line off, that is. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and install that fuel pump now and uh, hopefully this thing is done leaking. All right, guys. So I'm recording on my phone now and I hope everything is turning out okay. But as you can see, right up there is where the fuel pump goes. There's the um, outlet line right there. The inlet line is over there, and that is the return line. And as you can see, that's where it goes. So here's the new fuel pump right here. I hope you can mostly see. Here's the, I don't, again, I don't, I want to call it a tongue, but I really don't know. So what I'm going to do is put the gasket on it, the new gasket. That drops right on just like that. Then what I'm going to do is snake this up inside that hole right there and what I'm gonna do is you kinda have to feel it out uh, where it goes but I'm gonna have to do this off camera here alright guys I'm not using my camera or my mic right now because uh, my camera's dead but the fuel pump is in it is completely installed it's torqued down all the lines are in just have to put the other end of the line on the uh, carburetor end but then we're ready to test it out. This is all the crap that came out of it. So now I'm going to go ahead and st test it. Now you should always replace your uh, fuel filter uh, when you do this. But uh, I, I'm going to put this in the shade. I, uh, I don't have one and I'm not going to. But I, anyway, I, enough talking. I'm going to, let's, let's test it. All right. Sorry if there's any wind noise. This, um, I have it in. I have the fuel pump in. That is connected. It's connected to the carburetor. The battery's connected. There's only one thing left to do now. Take this key and see if it starts. Okay, I think... I think I have it in right. Um, so... We'll see here. This is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna prime it first. Alright, so I went ahead and tried to prime it but I sprayed some starting fluid in there and uh, also I checked and we're not leaking anything which is a good start okay let's try it again damn it okay again uh, all right take whatever it's running Okay, it was running there for a sec. There we go. It's running. And it's staying running. Okay, I gotta adjust that idle. Okay, let's give it another shot. So, you can hear that it needs the idle adjusted. Because my foot's on the gas. If I take my foot off, it'll die. Okay, let's see if we've been leaking. 
guys, check it out. Dry as a bone. No draw, no drips. The fuel pump fixed it. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is adjust the idle and then we've got it working. All right guys, so I actually adjusted the idle. Now it's uh, time, let's see. No. Nope. Just about, just about had it, hadn't had it. I haven't had it running in a little bit, so let's see. There we have it. Okay, so the idle's adjusted. You can hear it's doing well. There's still one problem with it though. This is dripping. There's a microfiber towel in there because it's dripping. The accelerator pump is dripping real bad. The carburetor bogs down under acceleration or throttle of any kind. So listen to this. That's foot on the floor revving. It's not, it's obviously not even working properly, but either way it's running. I'm gonna get a new carburetor for it, but this video was to show you guys everything that's wrong with this car. Now everything that was wrong, fuel pump, um, that's now fixed, which I'm really happy about. Um, that, that was the one thing, I mean it was, uh, it was really bad. Um, I wonder if this will be fixed when it re when it warms up. But other than that, what's wrong with it? There's a little tiny tear in this seat that's already been stitched up by someone. Bad windshield, sagging headliner. Um, that's about it. I mean, I can't think of really anything else. I mean, the, the, everything really works. I mean, it's got no gas. But um, there you go. Everything wrong with this car? Really not much. I mean, um, no rust on it. I mean, there's some bad, some body work that needs to be done. Um, but yeah, windshield, headliner, fuel pump, carb. That's it. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video nonetheless. Uh, I haven't uploaded in a while, uh, but if you enjoyed it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. Share this video with someone who you think might also enjoy it or find it useful. And uh, let me know in the comments section below. Let me know how I can improve and what you want to see, um, because that really does matter to me. And uh, I'm thinking, um, by the way, quick a little update here the Monaco is sold but not really so <laughs> the thing is the Monaco is sold to a guy in PEI if you don't know where PEI is that's way far east of Canada the furthest east you can go I'm in Western Alberta and <laughs> Western Canada in Alberta and uh, PEI is like this tiny, it's called, it's Prince Edward Island. Um, but anyway, the gu a guy there wanted to buy the car. So what he proposed is that he would e-transfer the money, I would write up the bill of sale, and then I would ship the car to him. I at first I was like, yeah, no, scam. But his shipping company has a depot here in Calgary, and I am supposed to just go deliver it. Uh, so that's not too hard, and it's a legitimate company, and the guy already sent me the money. Um, so we'll see what happens. It might be a scam, might not be. I'm hoping it's not. But anyway, uh, aside from that, I might also sell the LTD, and I might also buy back something. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.